Hello everybody and welcome to my session Paying with the Stripe in Microsoft Portals and Connected with Microsoft Teams and grabbed all together with Power Automate. Um, yes, first of all, I would like to thank all the sponsors that are sponsoring this event like ScriptRunner, DQ Global, Proximo3, Hitachi, uh, Yalysis and Red Spy. It's great to have all of them because without their support these events uh, could not happen, so thanks to all of them. So who am I? I'm Victor Sanchez. I work in Spain in a company called Accessure. Uh, I work as a D365 developer and you can find me at uh, victorsolaya.com or in Twitter at Victor Solaya. Just reach me if you want, just send me an email, a tweet, a direct message, whatever you want, So and we can chat. So what is this talk going to be about? Uh, well, first of all, it's going to be a structure, I hope, in 10% slides, then the 80% is going to be like kind of demo and workshop show and then the other 10% is going to be like the conclusion so we are going to see how everything is wrapped all together so we're going to see everything in the slides we are going to go through all the items all the tools that we are going to see in a very theoretical way well it's not very theoretical but I will put everything like some slides just to let you know what's going to be about then in, in in the main part in the in the demo part i'm going to show every tool we are going to go into deep into all of them i'm going to explain to you how everything is set up and then in the conclusion we are going to discuss a little bit of, of everything so where's this idea coming from so first of all uh, in this 2021 and 2020 uh, everything everybody has suffered covid 19 everybody has been in lockdown Everybody has been just stuck at home. So, well, this idea comes from uh, at some point, you know, that your children are not as smart as you, are not as good as you, they are not as clever as you are. So then what happens is they need some kind of support. They need some help. So what we are going to provide is with our stack, with Microsoft stack, we are going to provide something in order to help our children to have some kind of personal teacher, uh, like math teacher, language teacher, Spanish teacher, something like that. So what we're going to see in this demo is like the idea that is like we are going to we are going to connect our children with some kind of teacher and we are going to connect them through Microsoft Teams so they can chat, they can collaborate, they can do whatever they want. So that's the main idea, right? So we're going to see what the stack is going to be. Um, the stack is going to be first Microsoft Dataverse and Portals. If you, don't, if you don't know that Microsoft Dataverse acts like a database, it's, it's a structure like tables and rows. Uh, every, so it's like a database. It's like an SQL database, if you can imagine like that. But finally, it's like it, it's a structure like a database, but not SQ, like SQL. So you can create your own records with forms, you can display some views. So everything is set up there. Then portals is a web page. Finally, it's a web page that wraps all together uh, that database with a, with, with a web page. Uh, finally, you can show all the rows, all the forms, all the views that are set up in that database into portals. In a what you see, what you get uh, structure, or even you can just set up some HTML, CSS, JavaScript, if you are a fan of uh, front-end stack. Then we are going to go to the Stripe. So Stripe is our payment platform. We are going to pay into this Stripe platform, and then Stripe is going to give that money to us, and then they are going to receive some kind of fees. So finally, imagine that you are paying, like, you have a store, you have a T-shirt, uh, you pay Ten pounds to that for that T-shirt. So you send the the person the user is going to send those ten pounds to Stripe, and then nine point five let's say is for you, and then the rest is going to be for Stripe for fees for the platform and everything. Uh, we're going to use a Stripe just because it's such an awesome platform. It has beautiful documentation. So, but you can use even I'm using a Stripe, but you can use whatever you want. Finally, so you can connect. Uh, however you want. Then we are going to use Power Automate. We are going, if you don't know Power Automate, it's a, like a data automation. It, it, it acts like a service, finally. Like it, it's a split into two things. First is a trigger. 
and then is the action. So something is going to trigger your power automate and the action is the things that that power automate, that flow is going to do. Imagine that you are creating a record in your dataverse. Uh, once you create that record, something is going to happen. Those, what's going to happen is the actions. The, the creation of the record is the trigger. So with Power Automate, we can create all that kind of stuff. So we are going to see how everything is going to be connected with Power Automate. And then we have Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams, as you know, is a, a collaboration platform. It's the chat collaboration kind of files uh, to be uploaded, everything all together. So it's great to see Microsoft Teams here because you can connect how the teacher uh, and the children are going to be connected. So... Joke time. Parallel lines have so much in common. It's a same will never meet. You don't like that, eh? Oh my goodness. So what's Stripe? Well, Stripe, as I told you before, is a payment gateway, okay? It's a payment platform. As you can see here in this image, we are going to have everything. We are going to have the payments, the balance, customers. We are going to have something for the developers, others. We can have invoices even. So all, all everything you need is going to be inside this Stripe. And then... If you are kind of, okay, but probably this is difficult to embed in my Power Apps portals, don't worry, it has such a beautiful documentation that they are going to give you the SAT HTML and CSS you need in order to pay. So it's quite easy. It's quite easy to follow, it's quite easy, it's brilliant, then no complexities at all, so it's great. As I told you before, Stripe is the, the this payment platform that the, so how you pay them is they are going to receive some fees, so you don't have to pay them uh, like a monthly fee or something like that. So every payment that you receive in your, into your Stripe, they're going to receive an X percent. The Stripe provides you a, a test environment, just sign up, they provide you a test environment, and then you have the normal environment, the, 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 the current environment that they are going to pay you real money. So for that, you need like a bank account, you need to set up some many things, yeah, take a look at that, but it's, it's, it's a great platform. And then what's Portals? Portals, as I told you before, is the, the website, is a web page that we are going to see from those table and rows that we are going to have in our Dataverse. Uh, finally, how this is working is the Portals is a what you see, what you get. Uh, for non-developers, it's quite useful because if you want a uh, like quick uh, power portals, it's quite quick, quite fast to, to, to build. However, if you have some kind of developer, of, if you are a developer, I would suggest just go to the model driven app that Portals provides to you, the portal management, and then just configure everything with web templates, web pages. Um, so it's, it's much better because you are going to have that control that the what you see, what you get is not going to give to you. So I would suggest just go into the portal management and then do everything we need. So we are going to use that portal management. We are going to see the web pages and the web templates. We are going to work with those. Um, you are going to see everything there, and then you are going to see how easy it is to set up everything. Finally, it's just some HTML pieces. Uh, you have to copy something, and that's it. So what's Power Automate? Power Automate is our wrapper. So it's, as you can see here in that image, Power Apps is going to be our trigger. So when an action in Power Apps happens, then it's going to trigger all those actions. So Power Automate, uh, if you have worked with CRM before, is like the workflow. So you have like kind of creation, and then you have all the steps below. Or probably you know all the platforms like Zapier or something like that. All of them are like Power Automate. Power Automate connects with multiple services. They have connectors with many, many of the stuff. You have connectors with SharePoint, Google, uh, I don't know, Stripe even, out of the box. Uh, it has a lot of connectors, quite easy to do. You can perform HTTP requests, uh, HTTP response, you can parse some JSON, uh, you can receive many things from there. So Power Automate is the place that you can connect many services all together and you can call many services just from one Power Automate to another one. And then we have Microsoft Teams. Well, what's Microsoft Teams? Microsoft Teams is the connection, the chat collaboration, uh, file uploads, your calendar even. I use a lot of the calendar. Uh, then uh, lately, just recently, in the 2020s, I think last 
Qualter. I think they provide us like the the tools for developing power apps for Microsoft Teams. So just take a look. That's quite cool because you can embed your power apps into Microsoft Teams. So it's quite cool. And uh, that's why you can have some calls from Microsoft Teams. So it's like your, just your connector there. So it's it's a beautiful uh, platform just to connect. So just to grab all of that, what we are going to see is Stripe. First, we are going to take a look at the Stripe, how it's structure. We're going to see that dashboard. Then we are going to take a look at portals. We are going to see how portals looks like in our um, front end. And then we are going to see how the back end, like the web templates and the web pages are, are built. So we are going to see that. And then uh, we are going to move on to Power Automate. In Power Automate, we are going to see everything. We are going to see how what's going to be the trigger, how we build it. Uh, and we are going to see all the steps. Even we are going to create like a new Power Automate just to see how we create that because I created that and it's working right now. So we are going to see from scratch how to create one and we are going to follow the same steps. And then we are going to see in Microsoft Teams how everything is set and we are going to see how everything is, is, is being done. So just let me go to the to the dashboard of Stripe first. So as you can see here, we have, this is a beautiful uh, dashboard because if you have worked with many other platforms, with many payment platforms, uh, I would say like, I don't know, WorldPay, uh, I don't know more, but yeah, there are many there out there. So I would say it's just to take a look at the Stripe. Well, you have PayPal as well, but PayPal, I don't really like that much. I think they have like a expensive fees. So just take a look at the Stripe because they have, they don't have like much expensive fees. And the dashboard is quite beautiful. Even the documentation is great. Uh, even we can explore some of the docs. And then you're going to see like Stripe has a beautiful uh, thingy here that you can search the documentation and everything. We can see here, we can go to the dashboard. And even as you can see, we are connected here. So what that means is like if we go to the client side, uh, for example, here, API Stripe, we have some developer tools. Here, they are providing us like even our public key so as you are signed up here you are logged in they are going to provide with everything you need as you can see here i'm using the html plus js if you like react you can use react but we are going to see uh, the html and js uh, and the javascript so we're going to see how everything is is, is being done uh, so but everything has been copied from here what i mean is like we don't need anything else apart from copy this kind of tools we are going to copy these and we are going just to check everything. Um, so as you can see here, Stripe has some uh, elements as well. So if you want a payment request button element, you are going to copy that, that's it. So you can copy some Ivan element. Uh, so if you go there, probably you can copy some HTML that is here. So you copy the HTML, you copy the CSS, you copy the JavaScript, boom, you have that. Everything is done in a just, and then this is what this is what's going to be. So you have everything just in a couple of clicks, in a couple of copies and pastes. So I would suggest just to go to this documentation. If you are not a fan of many of your payment platform, just take a look at the Stripe because it has such a beautiful uh, documentation. Uh, so we are going to see this dashboard. So this dashboard, what did they have? Uh, first, they have like some notifications here, so you can grab your API keys, you can verify your email if you haven't verified it yet. So we are going to see all the payments. As you can see here, I've paid like multiple times uh, with the same customer. So if you are paying with, so there, there are two pay, kind of payments. One is the client side payment and the other one is the server side payment. If you are paying always with the client side, uh, if you don't provide the right tool for providing the customer as I'm doing right now, then it's going to create a new customer all the time. So that email is not going to be your customer ID. The customer ID is provided by Stripe just by, by itself in the background. So you're going to have for each payment, you're going to have a new customer if you haven't provided a customer from yourself. So you can see here all the payments. If we go and take a look at the payment, it's going to be really quick. But you can see here the payment method. So you're going to see here even uh, where is this uh, card from because uh, that's not my card because I live in Spain, so I'm not from the United States. But it's going to see you're going to check where is this even the location. So uh, everything is 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 being done here. You can check everything from here. 
Uh, you can check even the payouts, uh, all the transactions that have happened. Uh, like here, as you can see, all of them are charged. Uh, where is this available from? Um, you can see from he from here the, the payments. You can even uh, refund, uh, you can send a receipt, you can view the customer, you can view the payment. So everything is done from here. It's a beautiful dashboard. You don't need anything as a developer. So every person can come here. You can see the balances, like how much in the whole history of your life, of your e-commerce, uh, they have paid to you. Uh, you have your customers, as I told you before, a customer is created if you haven't provided the, the ID for that customer. Uh, you can see here, like if you go to the customer that has paid, like what's the credit balance, uh, as we are not saying like this customer has top up something, then we don't have that credit balance, but you can, we can see here the payments for that customer. We can see the recent activity, so quite easy to follow subscription. What a subscription is? Well, if you have Netflix, probably you know. If you are paying like seven pounds or something like that every month, then you're going to see like, well, there's a monthly uh, subscription. So that's the schedule every month. So you can see that. Then you have invoices. Invoices are invoices. So then you can send an invoice to a person that has paid because they are requesting some kind of invoice. So just send an invoice to them, if you, you can provide that, so just create a test invoice. I'm not going to go into much detail here. You can connect some accounts, uh, that's e-commerce and all that stuff, Squarespace, WooCommerce, Wix. So I think even Shopify is connected with this. Uh, Shopify is the most known, if you are not aware of that. Um, and then you have your products. As we can see here, we have all the products that I've, I've created here. Um, what a product is? Uh, just imagine a product as a t-shirt. You have a t-shirt and then we can put here t-shirt, uh, let's say t-shirt. So that's going to be our product, right? And what we need as well is the price. So we can put like the, the kind of payment is a recording or a one time. If we put here like, I don't know, a t-shirt, it costs like 10 pounds and we can put some additional description like this is the t-shirt a size L, uh, we can save that product. So, uh, well, this pro I will provide a password just to continue. So we are providing that t-shirt element. And as we can see here, that pricing has been here, those 10 pounds has been here. We can see the API ID, the price ID. However, we have the product ID. So what that means is like our product is the t-shirt. However, we can put some price into that t-shirt because you can have t-shirt size L, size M, size S. So all of those items, so for example, the t-shirt uh, M, the t-shirt size M is going to be here. So it's going to cost you eight pounds. So all of them are going to have like different um, IDs even if, so you can see that the finish is the same, but here is AOM and here is AMP. So they are different, all right, all right. So, as you can see, you you don't you have to provide the product ID and the price and the price ID. However, in portals, we are only going to need that price ID because we are going to pay for that item. Okay. So as well, you can see from here that you can copy to live mode. Uh, you can edit the product. You can archive the product. You can delete the product. So uh, we're going to delete this product just because we don't need that. Uh, we're going to delete this product because it has one or more user created prices. So um, we can delete them and then we are going to see like how everything is done. But we are not going to do that right now. Uh, then you have some coupons, tax rates. I'm not going to go into detail of that, but we're going to go into the developers. We are going to see some items. So as you can see here, the developers have provided something. As you can see here, we have the API keys. That is the publishable key and the secret key. So our publishable key is always going to be in the client side integration because in JavaScript, you are going to need that. The secret key is if you are performing some server side integration, you are going to need that secret key and you can use that. Uh, you can have that always from here and then uh, just copy that into the client side, into the server side, and then perform what you need. Then as you can see here, we have the webhooks. What the webhooks are, they are like trigger points uh, when an event has been completed. What I mean with that is like when you pay something, imagine that you have paid that t-shirt that we had before, you are paying those 10 pounds, but imagine that you are you don't have that money in your debit card 
and you have five pounds and then what's going to happen that charge is going to be fail is going to be failed so you have different kind of triggers so you have like charge fail you have charge succeeded you have charge refund uh, we are going to see that if we even we are going to create an, an endpoint and we are going to see uh, events to send so that event is like imagine we have the charge fire the charge fail charge pending but how many charts here so what they are going to do is like once something happens when a let's say when a charge is succeeded we are going to trigger an endpoint url this trigger this url is the one that is going to be provided from power automate so power automate is going to provide us that url to us and then we are going to paste that url from just here and then everything is going to be done once the charge is succeeded and then power automate is going to do all the steps that we we've said i'm going to cancel this but we are going to we are going to talk about this a little bit later so as you can see here's a stripe a stripe is such beautiful and amazing as you can see it's quite quite simple to use so no problems at all just take a look just register yourself you only need a, an email and your password just verify that email that's it you have your test uh, your test environment is quite easy then we are going to go to the home right so as you can see here well i was testing that before that the payment successful was done uh, everything is requested from that uh, parameter but if we just load we can see here that we have three teachers right so we have once it loads ooh, yeah now so we have that language teacher we have a spanish teacher and we have the maths teacher i've created like three items we have created three teachers and uh, they are going to be our products okay so in stripe we have created three products and then what we had to do was an integration like so our teachers should be a table in database called teachers and every time you create a new teacher you had to create a connection between that creation in the database and the stripe how would you do that yeah power automate so just create a power automate every time you create a row let's call it row uh, in that teacher's table then create a stripe product or a stripe price even we could create like a product with three, three with three teachers it's up to you how you want to set up that but you can do one way or the other um as you can see it's quite easy to connect uh, with power automate because it's just when you create something just create something in a stripe we are going to see how we would create that well i haven't created that because it's just a uh, copy paste and items i copied that price id what that we've seen before i copied that in the web template we are going to see that right now so in the web page we have um that item so we have the card for that teacher here we have the on click and here we have the data price id that data price id is coming from the price that i told you before uh, i'm not going to go that i'm not going to go there right now but we can see that uh, that the price is the same that we had before just take a look at this it's not too much it's just html and css before because we have some styles everything is coming from bootstrap so uh bootstrap's taking about all that css that i'm not quite fancy of but um and we are using some javascript that javascript I've moved that to the web template so we can see that much better. So we have our function that is called paid teacher. We are providing a button ID and then we copy all the stripe, boom, that's it. I mean, I'm not going to explain to you anything of this because you can copy this from from Stripe, from the documentation from Stripe because I copied that. As you can see here, I left the comments even like replaced with the ID of your price. And the price ID, you only need to take, the only thing JavaScript needs is just take the price id so with jquery we took the data price id that we provided in that web page so we provided this and then we are taking that price id and then we are paying we only have the mode payment the successful url and the cancel url the successful url is what's going to happen after the payment has been successful and what's going to happen after the payment has been cancelled uh, so those are going to be our our like the the, the next the steps uh, we're going to see a bit that later how that works even the cancel and the success url so you can see both of them a little bit and then we have our power automate how everything is connected if we edit the flow we are going to see like here we have the when an http request is received so here we have the url 
that is provided by by well by by Power Automate. We are going to explain you. We are going to create right now a Power Automate, and I'm going to tell you how this is done. And this is the URL that we are providing to that webhook. So if you check this URL and you check this is this URL, they are exactly the same. We provide a request body JSON, so I copy that from from when you pay something, uh, they are going to give you some, they are going to give you like a schema. Uh, even if we go to the webhook, we are going to see like uh, a charge has been succeeded, and when the charge is succeeded, you can request to your endpoint like how this is being done. So you can take this JSON and you just paste into your schema. That's it. Then we create the user in the Azure Active Directory. I'm just creating that manually. But however, what I would suggest to you is every time a contact is created in portals, then create a user active Azure Active Directory. That's it. I mean, just connect with another Power Automate. Like every time you create a, a contact in your dataverse, create that in the Azure Active Directory. Give them some usage location, give them, assign them a license. That's it, boom, you have your user in the Azure Active Directory with the license. So we are going to go a little bit how explaining how everything is done, but we, here we can create a channel. Here we can see we are posting a message into that channel. We are using the location user update because we need that for the Azure Active Directory. We need to assign them a license. We are going to check how can we take that ID from the license? Because if we open this, this is a so this icon is for the HTTP. So what we are doing is a post we, to the Microsoft Graph API uh, URL, and then we are signing them a license. You can take this from the Graph API. However, if you want to to know how this Graph API, just go into that or just check into the slides because I put all the references to many things like the Graph API. And then here we can see the SKU ID. The SKU ID is the ID of our license. Even if it is called SKU ID, the best option would be license ID, but they call this SKU ID, so that's good. Uh, we only need this, and then we need to provide some kind of um, configuration uh, after that. And then we are adding the member that's been created here. Uh, we are adding to the team that we've created there, and then we are creating a Teams meeting just between the teacher and the and the child. Uh, so that's our Power Automate. We are going to see right now. So we are going to create a cloud flow, and then we are going to see how that URL is being done. So just let me go into here with the connectors, and then we are going to put the HTTP, and then we are going to see here that there's a request. We are going to check that request, and we are, when an HTTP request is received, we are going to click there. We can see here that the URL will be generated after save. So just take a look. Uh, we are going to copy this request body, so we know the body is OK. And then we are going to click a new step, because if I try to save now, it's going to say, so at least contain one trigger and one action. Trigger and action. We haven't provided any action. So we are going to go and we are going to, I don't know, uh, we are going to take a variable, uh, initialize variable, my var is going to be of type string, and we are going to put a value that is going to be, I don't know, uh, success URL. So we have taken all of this is provided by the HTTP request. So once we save, we're going to see that this is saving. And then once it's saved, the HTTP is going to generate us our URL. So we are going to just copy this, and then we are going to provide that to the webhook. So that's the everything we needed from the previous flow that we created here. So just save that, copy that URL, put in the webhook, that's it. So I'm just going to go back and I'm going to delete this because I don't want just to do anything here. I'm going to delete this because we've created the other flow, but I just wanted to show to you how easy it is to create something. Um, we go here, so we have our run history when something has been done. We have everything has been created. I had some failures, as you can see, so you can check that even. Um, then we are going to our Microsoft Office, the portal office. As I told you before, we are going to need uh, the ID for our SKU ID. Uh, let me just go to that ID flow, and then here we can see that when you are sending a license, you have that ID. Where is that ID coming from? Because you are not going to need that ID from anywhere and then if you to if you want to write that by hand 
just take that from somewhere. However, I would suggest just to go to an HTTP, just get that, and then just put that in a dynamic way. I would suggest to you to, to do that. So if we go to the Microsoft Office, if we go to the to the admin, we've, we've, we have, we've seen here that we have that admin. Uh, let me just go open a new one. And then we can see here, we're going to show all, we are going to go to the billing, we are going to the licenses. And then here we can see that we have an Office 365 So that's the license that we would need for Outlook, uh, Microsoft Teams. So we are going to sign a new set of that license. If you are working with children and teachers, probably you are working with that student license. Uh, so yeah, you can you can you could grab that. So if we go to that uh, license, we're going to see here that here on the top is that license ID. It's the same ID as we are providing here, as you can see. It's the exact same. So just take a look at that because you can see here everything. All right. Um, then we have here the users that we have in the Azure Active Directory. As you can see, we have to go to the portal Azure.com. Uh, if we open that portal Azure.com, you don't have like a license for Azure, but you don't need that because every tenant should be provided with an Azure Active Directory to have your customers there. So if we go here to the Azure services, we are going to see here Azure Active Directory. And then here we can grab the users. And then here we are going to see all the users that we have in our tenant. All right. So we can we, we can build from here what's going to be everything. And then finally we have the chat, as you can see where well, Microsoft Chats is the same, uh, is nothing. So here we have like uh, another one that I created before. We are going to delete that. We're going to leave this channel. Uh, but you can see here that we have everything we need, right? Uh, as you can see, we are going to edit the flow. We are going to create a channel that is called Teachers Book uh, SS 2021. We're going to post a message. So everything is going to be connected through Power Automate. We are going to check that. Um, so what we are going to do is we are going to book a teacher. We are going to pray that everything is working right. So just let me put my email. Let's put my card information. Don't, don't, don't look at my card information because it's quite secure. No, I'm joking. So this card information is provided by Stripe. So I'm going to leave in the in the slides that reference for the card test. And you can check that in the in the documentation from Stripe. It's quite useful. You can put here any any uh, CVC, any name on the card. Uh, you can you can choose the country or the region. I'm going to put Spain because I'm living in Spain. I'm in Spanish, so I'm going to process the payment and boom. So this is going to redirect, as you can see, to the payment successful. Uh, as you can see, with Path for the Teacher, you will be added to the Microsoft Teams to start a conversation. But as I told you before, we are going to book a teacher. What will happen if we cancel? That's going to go to the error payment, payment successfully false. Uh, we provide that in the web template and something went wrong. That's uh, something that I created quite fast. So no problem at all, but that's a cancel, the cancel URL that we provided here, as you can see, payment successfully is equal false. And as you can see here, payments as well as quite false. So that's good. So what we are going to go now is to that run history. So we are going to check if that has run. Well, it succeeded. So for a demo, that's brilliant. So 42 seconds ago, we are going to see what's happened. Uh, so an HTTP has been received. So what has happened is like an HTTP request has received. Where, where's that coming from? That's coming from the webhooks. So if we go and we click in webhooks again, so this can be uh, refreshed. If we click here, we can see that a chart has been created right now. Well, we are an UTC now. Uh, the UTC, you know, the dates are quite. Uh, but yeah, the chart has been succeeded. So we can check what's ha what has happened. We can check the amount. We can check uh, who's been the email. We can check even the customer is being provided. So all of this stuff is provided by that chart. So we are going to check uh, that everything has been done correctly. So if we go again to that Power Automate, we have created a user. If we go to the users, if we refresh, we can see here that Donald the Duck has been created. So Donald the Duck with that password has been created with that user principal name, given that name and given that surname. So we put everything, we have created a channel, as you can see here, it's called Teachers Book SS2021. We post a message that says, hey, hello, I'm here. 
And then we've assigned the usage location, we have assigned the license, add a member to the team, and create a Teams meeting. So we are going to check that the user has the correct license. So let me just refresh this. We are going to check that this Donald the Duck is assigned that license. So everything has been done correctly with those HTTP, with the Microsoft Graph API. Just check the Microsoft Graph API because it has like such, a lot, well, it has a lot of uh, functions to do. So just check that because it's quite useful to, to check. Then what we are going to see is like, well, a Teams has been created. So if we go to that general, we've seen here that Teacher's Book SS2021 has been created with a, hello, I'm here. So that's it. I mean, and as the last step, we said that we were going to create a Teams meeting. Was that Teams meeting? Boom. I don't know where I put that. Uh, oh, yeah. I put that for Saturday, not for Sunday, but yeah. So that's the meeting start. So as you can see here, if we click, we can see that Donald the Duck has been assigned to that as well. So everything has been connected, as you can see, from, from Power Automate and Microsoft Teams with Stripe and Portal. So everything is connected all together. And we can see how, how with just simple steps, like Portals has simple steps like HTML, CSS, Stripe, we've done almost nothing, just created the product and nothing else apart from the webhook. Power Automate, you've seen. It's quite simple. It just puts some, a couple of steps and everything has been connected quite easily. And then at, at last we have the Microsoft Teams that they, we can chat with, with Donald the Duck. So we can see here Donald the Duck and we can put something to him like, hey man. So everything is there and then he's going to see that message. We can, we can be provided that. Uh, so that's perfect, you know? So that's great. Uh, just Take a look into that because probably um, that Donald Duck has been a license, but you know that when you are assigned a license, it's quite slow sometimes, so probably it's going to take some time. So just check that just in case. And then that's everything I wanted to talk about. So just let's go to our slides. Yeah, we are going to do like a, uh, like a, a, a sum up, okay? Uh, I'm going to share this one, hopefully. Uh, review, view, design, insert, design, no transaction, slideshow from garden slide. So what we have done, okay, is a Stripe. We've seen portals, we've seen Power Automate and Microsoft Teams. So what we have seen in, my, in, in a Stripe, just as a recapitulation, we have set up the products we want, right? We have done all that automation with Power Automate. Uh, just for that demo, as I told you, we created those products manually, and then we have called that webhook, as you can see here, that's the webhook um, from a Power Automate, and the products, as you can see here, we have that price ID, just to you to remember what we have done. And then what we've seen in the portals is just our teachers, as you can see, beautiful bootstrap and images that they created. Those images, by the way, have been provided by a web page with images that from people that don't exist. So just take that from that. Um, I would suggest to you as well. So I, I put in here in this slide uh, that you can check, uh, you can retrieve those users. As you could see, I put those users manually by hand. However, I would suggest to you, if you are creating that table teachers in your database, I would suggest to you to put a fetch XML to retrieve all of that. That fetch XML, is going to put in the latest slide as well for references. But you could use Fetch XML to retrieve those teachers and then just dynamically uh, create all those teachers in your database, in, in your portals. Uh, then we have called that Stripe function that is provided by Stripe just to call that uh, checkout. And that's what we've seen in the portals, nothing else. Then if we go to the Power Automate, we've seen that when we have created an HTTP request, everything has been created from there. I would say yes to you as well. Create that just uh, an, a Power Automate just to create the user. Another Power Automate just when a payment has been received. And even another Power Automate when a teacher has been created, just create that as a product. So you could have like three separate items, uh, Power Automates, that could create dynamically stuff for you. I would say yes to you to do that. Uh, so you don't have like manually stuff written. Uh, if you want, if you have any question about that, just let me know. Just write to me any any email or whatever, and I will help you uh, in order to just make that correctly. 
what we've seen in teams is uh, we've seen that we created like a, a teacher's lesson teams and we've seen that everything with graph with a graph api uh, can be created as well even microsoft teams even there are many things in previewing that power automate we've seen that everything uh, can be can be done quite easily uh, even uh, we could take a look that the stripe has some actions even we can go let me just go quickly to that to that flow uh, well, let's go and create here another step and here if i put a stripe uh, we could see here that the stripe has like some items like create a customer or uh, data product so it has actions so you could do things like this and then you could easily create that but if your function is not here just create an http trigger and that's it you can get post whatever you need because the stripe has uh, all those events there uh, so easy to follow uh, then uh, from current slide yeah so what we've seen in teams is that so we've created that connection between the teacher and the child um, you could do that easy to do and then last what i told you the references so you can have the the, the stripe payment a uh, we could we could have done to this stripe payment and we could see in, uh, where I took that HTML, CSS, JavaScript from, so it's quite easy. You have the testing cards, webhooks, how the Microsoft API for Teams works, the portal specs, as I told you, how to retrieve all those teachers dynamically, and then how you want to, to add the license. Uh, I put that, uh, so just in case you, you forget about that, so you have that reference there. So, for last, thanks to all of you for being in this session. However, what did the spaghetti say to other spaghetti? Pastra vista, baby! So thanks to all you for coming. Uh, if you want to talk to me, just go to Victor Slaya on Twitter, victorslaya.com as my webpage, or even you can go to my GitHub because I created some PCFs that you probably you've used. I would just very glad if you talk to me and say, hey man, I use your PCF. So, and if you have any issue, any question, just give me a shout and I will help you with anything you need, okay? So thanks to all of you for coming and see you soon and I hope you enjoyed this session. Thanks to all of you. Bye-bye. Pasta la vista, babies!